going on guys? John Elder here from CodeVit.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add pagination to your data tables for KiviMD and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at pagination for our data tables. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at these cool little data tables for Kivi MD. In this video, I want to show you how to add pagination and modify some of the settings to do different things for that. So you can see we can click on here, we can change it to like three, it pops down to three, we can say 15, we can paginate through here, we can do all the things. And uh, it's pretty cool. Alright, so let's head back over to our code. And as always, we're using the sublime text editor in the get bash terminal. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kivi playlist with over 50 Kivi videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. Alright, so I've got the code from our last video. And I just renamed it from table to table two dot pi just so, so it's a little different. So if you didn't see the last video, check that out links in the playlist in the comment section. But the first thing I want to do is add a bunch more data. So let's come down to our row data, I'm just going to copy this. And let's go uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, And so now we have 10 of these things. And let's just copy this again, let's go 20, 30. So we've got a bunch of stuff here. Let's save this and run it just to see what this looks like. So Python table two dot I'm in my C slash KVMD directory, got my virtual environment, you can see turned on there. So if we run this, and pull it over, you see, We've got a lot more stuff here. But all of the things that we just copy and pasted aren't showing up, we've only got one, two, three, four, five of these things. So we want to add some pagination. So how do we do that? Super easy. Let's just come back over here. And right up here where we did our position hint and all this sort of configuring stuff, we just want to add a couple of new things. So let's go use underscore pagination. And let's set that equal to true. And this is just a boolean true or false, it's false by default, but we can add true, don't forget to put your comma. So let's go ahead and come back here and run this again. And boom, just like that, we have pagination. And you can see it defaults to five, but you can change it to five or 10. So okay, that's cool. Now what if you don't want to do an in increments of five? How do you change that? Super easy, head back over here, we can just go rows underscore num and set that equal to anything. So I'm going to say let's say we want three per page. So if we save this, head back over here, run it again. Now you can see there's three things here, one, two, three, and it defaults in 369, right? So this thing is giving us three options, 369. What if we want it to be taller, we want more options, what if we want it to be 369, 12, 15, whatever, how do we do that? Well, we can do that pretty simple, head back over here. This is a little weird, we're changing the height of that menu that pops up. So that's the pagination underscore menu underscore height. And this is in DPs. Remember in the last video, we added this DP thing stands for display pixels, same thing here. So the default is 120 display pixels. So say we want it double that we change it to 240. So if we save this run it, that's a little weird to me, it should be like, how many items do you want? Not how high do you want it to be? But uh oh, oh, you know what, I forgot a comma. There we go. Always have to have a comma after that. So save it, run it again. Anyway, so okay, so now you see this is 36912. It's twice as big. Well, not quite twice as big, but it's bigger now. And you could change it accordingly, just by changing the display pixels. So okay, that's cool. Finally, there's one more thing I want to mention. And this doesn't seem to work very good. But you can set the position be either center or auto of the, of the pagination menu. So we could go pagination underscore menu underscore position and set that equal to center. Now if we save this up, oh, don't forget your comma, I always forget the comma it seems like. So if we save this and run it, you could see, okay, it doesn't seem to have changed position, right? So if we look at this, if we kind of go right up here, it's kind of under the C or the O sort of ish, right? So if we come back here and change it from center to auto, we save this and run it again. You can see it's still sort of under the C and the O it doesn't really change. 
So I don't really know what the deal is with that. Maybe it just doesn't work <laughs> or something. But in theory, that's how you could change that from being automatically placed to being centered. Maybe it has something to do with when you move the thing. I don't really know. But uh, that's that. Another thing I've noticed is you can, in theory, change the background color. The docs say that you can, but it doesn't really seem like you can. So let's go background underscore color. And this is going to be a list in the normal way that we change colors. So this is going to be, remember, R, G, B, and then a transparency level, right? So if we wanted to change this to, say, for instance, red, zero, zero, and a transparency level of like one or even like 0.5, something like that. If we save this, came back here and ran it again, you're going to see no red color anywhere. So the documentation says that you can change the color. I don't know. I can't really figure out how to do it, though. That's how you're supposed to be able to do it. But as you can see, it doesn't really work. Another thing that doesn't quite work with this. And I don't know this for a fact, but I think the reason why we have these problems with these two things and other things with this is because this is not really a settled widget. This is still a work in progress. They're still doing tweaks and things on this data table widget, and it changes from time to time. And I think maybe they just haven't gotten around to doing this yet. I haven't really digged into the code yet to see if that's true. That's just my gut instinct. That's what I'm guessing. But either way, if in the future they get this worked out, this is how you would change that, uh, change the color and the position, center, and do something like this. Again, remember, it's a Python list. If you don't know what I'm doing with this color thing, go back in the playlist. I got a lot of videos on color and Kivi, so you can check that out. But this is just a Python list within R, G, B, and a transparency level. And that's really all there is to it. So that's pagination for data tables. Pretty simple, but uh, very useful. You're probably almost certainly going to use that because you're going to have more than five things. And if you do, you need pagination to scroll through them all or else it's just not going to really work. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.